Hello everybody. Today we are going to see how to visualize a time series data. A time series analysis provides one more dimension in the form of time in addition to the other dimensions to slice your data. So it is one of the widely used visualization which can help to plot the value across time. Like if you have seen so many line charts, it's a line chart. But then let's dig deeper on what these line charts exactly are. In this video, we will be looking at one of the ways of analyzing the time series data. There are multiple ways. So we'll be looking at a sparkline chart in this video. The sparkline charts are used when the data is over like multiple years. So it shows the data trend over a period of time. Here we are not exactly focusing on what the particular value is, but we are more focused on how the trend has been over a period of time. Say, for example, uh, if you take the rental movie industry, earlier it was just like tapes and CDs and then how it moved like from um, getting from your um, rental CDs and then now it has moved into online subscriptions. We are not exactly looking at the sales, but we are seeing how, how it has been trending over the period, like what has actually triggered the sales over the period of time. These charts could be in a very good addition on the dashboard to show how the values have performed over the years. In this, we will be seeing about the music industry sales over the multiple years. Just for the readability, I have uh, used a data from 2002 where it is moved from CDs to the to the current uh, plays where it's more like in a digital format. The sparkling charts are represented either as a line chart, a bar chart, an area chart or a win loss sparkline. The data that we will be using today is how the music industry has performed over a period of the last uh, 20 years. So we had various formats like the CD, the CD single, the vinyl, and then, then came the online subscriptions and things like that. So we have that format and uh, how much, uh, what was the value of the records that was sold over this period of time. So this will be our data that will feed into our charts. So uh, let us first start by uh, importing the data. So I'm uh, using the data that I just showed here. I'm just uh, opening it in Tableau. And then let me go to the sheets. And then if you see the year, here is like in a numerical format. So let's just change it into a date. So that's the first thing. And then uh, next we need to pull in the year into the columns but we need it as a discrete year instead of like um, continuous and then uh, we also require the sum of the total number of value the actual value i'm also going to include the format here in the rows so that will give me like a uh, the different format so this is what we want so if you see here uh, all are in the same uh, axis same scale is what it has got but let's uh, change the axis and say like uh, independent axis range for each column which will make more sense um, so let's do that and then uh, so this is our basic uh, sparkline chart let's add one more saying like uh, how what is the last value so let me create a calculated field and called it call it as last value so and i'm going to give the formula if the last equal to zero that means if it is the last one then i'm going to say it has the sum of and then i'm just going to end so now let's call this into my rows. So what happens is it will create a dual uh, dual chart. So let's say this is a dual I axis chart. And then uh, let's also synchronize the axis. The moment we do that, we will get a, pop, uh, a line chart and we also get the value only for the last, last value of the um, in a particular format for every year sorry for the la uh, for the last year but if you see most of these kind of charts do, do not have like uh, all the headers and footers and things like that so let's remove the header and footer so let's remove the show header on both the sides 
So this is our first chart which will give us the uh, uh, a trend of how the performance of the different, uh, how the music industry has performed differently over the period of time. So let's call it as a line chart. I'm just giving it like to understand. So the next one here uh, we have to do is the area. So in, in our thing which I told earlier, there are multiple kinds of the spark line chart. One is the line chart and then the there is the area chart, the bar chart and the wind loss chart. So next is the area chart. The bar chart, area chart are all al almost the same way. So let me do the area chart. I'm just going to duplicate this chart and then instead of a line, I'm going to say it as an area. So the moment I say area, you will see how the trend has been over a period of time. So if you feel this is a much better view, so you can use this instead of a, um, uh, instead of a normal line chart. And uh, you also make sure that uh, we'll have to change on the last value. We'll have to make sure it is in a shape instead of like uh, same area. So make sure that is there. And let's choose a shape and make sure the size is smaller. So we are good to go with the um, area chart. Let me call this as a area chart. The next one that we can create is, uh, is the bar chart. So let's go ahead and create the bar chart. So I'm going to duplicate this again. So we get uh, and then let me do a bar instead of like an on the on this axis on the first axis like where you are taking the value actual value let me do it as a bar and uh, instead of showing the last value let's say like uh, let us want to show the maximum if it if it had the maximum value let us show it as a num wherever it had the maximum value let us show that instead of the last value this is our choice we can do whatever works for us or whatever we want to show. So let's do uh, maximum value. Let's show and let's see if sum of the uh, value actual is equal to the window max is the if it's equal to the window max then let us uh, then we are going to show the value else we are just not we are not just going to display anything so this is one thing which we can do and uh, instead of the uh, last value which we had taken earlier, we are going to here take the maximum value into our rows. So wherever it has been, the, so this is the maximum value. Say for example, in the year um, 2002, it had the maximum value. For example, CDs had the maximum value in the year 2002 and then they have always been declining. Say, but if you say the download music video, it had like, a, a, sorry, the download album, it had a maximum value in 2013. So we are just going to take where it had a maximum value. Let's also make this, okay. First thing is let's change it into a dual axis chart. And also let's synchronize the axis. And I'm hoping this is all as an independent axis. Let's make sure it is in the independent axis range for each of the row or column and then let's also remove the headers now let's go into the so where we are showing the maximum value we just don't want we can leave it as like a, a, bar, a bar like this but if you just want to show both you can go ahead and do like a circle or something like that uh, where it will show like a circle where it had the maximum value so we can see how the maximum value had been where actually it had a maximum value and how it has been trending say for example uh, uh, the limited uh, tier paid subscription is 
more right now so it's showing a maximum value at this point in time so this gives us an idea like uh, how the sales has been and where it has actually reached its peak and then how is it progressing and the next kind of chart uh, let's call this as bar chart The next kind of chart that we want to do is like uh, we want to show the win loss sparkling chart. Let's go ahead and see how to create the win loss sparkling chart. So uh, now I've created another uh, sheet and I just called this a win loss sparkling. So let's uh, include the year into the columns and also move the for, uh, format into the rows and also let's call in the uh, value actual into the rows the moment we do that we get a line chart let's change it into a bar chart and also make sure that we have the uh, we edit the axis and make sure it is an indian independent axis range for each of the row or the column which makes more sense and then um, so this gives me the first um, bar chart so beyond this um, i'll have to create something which will say like how i do a win or a loss in this case i'm thinking of doing an average and then say if my if the value has been greater than the average then i'm going to call it as a win if the value is lesser than the average then i'm going to call it as a loss so let's go ahead over a, i mean through through the over to the whole period of time whatever is the average and i'm going to say through the whole period of time this has been my average and if I have performed well in this year over my average then I am a win and if I have performed lesser than my average then I am a loss. So let's create a calculated field and call it as a win loss. And uh, I am going to say if my sum is uh, greater than the average window average then I am going to call it as a 1 or then else I am going to call it as a 0. So here I'm not going to create a dual axis chart, but bef okay. But before that, let's go into the analytics and uh, let's create a simple average. So that's what we spoke about, right? So let's create a reference line uh, on the pane and let me call, uh, we're just going to use an average and then let's make it all none. So that's the first step. And then now I also have created a calculated field called as a win loss. So let me move the calculated field into my color. So here we are not creating a dual axis chart. We are just going to say whether it is a win or a loss. So and uh, let's change it into a more meaningful colors. So I'm going to say custom diverging. So in that case, I will get I can uh, choose the colors that I want for both the things. So uh, uh, custom diverging and I'm going to say Let's say I want to say red and another thing is green. So whenever the average has been, uh, whenever the data has, whenever the value has been greater than the average, then we are getting it as a green and whenever it's been lesser than the average, then we are getting it as red. So this gives like uh, the moment I see it, I get a picture of how my uh, value, uh, how a particular uh, format of music has sold over a period of um, period of time even without going into the detail so this like gives a very good picture so let's remove the um, header let's move this board okay so let's also remove this header so we have created uh, all the four kinds of the uh, sparkling charts now let's call it in a dashboard this is just to show it's not a, a jazzy dashboard we are just going to show what are all the different kinds of sparkling charts that we have done so let's go into a create dashboard and i'm going to say the uh, it has an automatic so let's first call in the line chart and then the area chart and then the bar chart and then the wing loss park line. I can probably remove this because uh, we can keep the wing loss park line if you want to show this is a lot which is a loss and a win or you can just remove that too. And so this is my uh, spark line charts the different kinds of spark line charts that we have done. So this gives like a picture of uh, how the spark line charts work. If you see, uh, since all the charts have the same uh, format 
in the same order we can probably remove the format in one or in all the other things except one so we it gives us more area so let's So this is a sparkline chart. So these are the four different kinds of sparkline chart. One is the line chart, the area chart, the bar chart, and the wind loss sparkline chart. The wind loss sparkline chart shows like clearly how the trend has been over a period of time. So we can see certain like all the sound exchange distribution and things like that have been really gaining popularity now. But then the vinyl single has really uh, lost its popularity and even the CD has lost its popularity over a period of time. So this is one way of analyzing the time series data. Uh, let's look at another way of analyzing the time series data in our next video. Thank you.